Archimax login confirmed. Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Episode 33. It's Welcome to Mars when you already knew that. Now, I know the song's over and we're supposed to start the episode, but fuck. If if you haven't seen this movie yet, you need to stop this podcast right now. And, you, you know, you smile and you're like, oh man, this is going to be crazy. No, I'm serious. Stop the podcast. Especially if the movie's still in the theater while you're listening to this. You, you have no excuse. It's a new year. Work harder to see the big ones. And this one, considering the prestige involved, it's fucking big boy caprice. And I know our whole shtick is to be coy. Oh, did they like it? Didn't they like it? But no, this transcends all that. This is a full-blown, four-alarm LodgeCast emergency here. So just treat yourself, buy a ticket for yourself, and welcome yourself to motherfucking Marwin. It's 2019, y'all. We are back. We are back, the Lodge Cast. I'm your Lodge Master. With me, as always, is Brother Bishki. Happy New Year, Lodge. And Brother Lucas. Happy 2019. Oh my God, we are bringing it back in the biggest way possible. I, the, in in this podcaster's young career, there has not been a movie that has inspired more anticipation on... <laughs> giddiness! Just, just, just... We've had a long time to anticipate. Just, well. Dumb we, giddiness. We've been seeing previews for this for uh, I, God knows how different long. Different version previews. Different, yeah. different versions, because the first one really Whiffed. didn't work. You oh. can see them retooling it, and it didn't, it didn't seem to matter. Uh, the movie is Welcome to Marwin... <laughs> it's uh, based on a documentary, Marwin Call, I think it's called. I have not seen it. 20, Has anyone 20, seen it? 2010 documentary? No, I have not. I have, and uh, not recently. I think I saw it right when it came out because the subject matter was very interesting. From what I remember, it's about a guy who kind of gets brain damaged and makes his own little town that he gets to control. Very compelling documentary, and then when I saw... That this was that, supposedly, it looks like uh, Zemeckis just jacked off all over the place on this, and I can He's getting his CG nightmare fix. I cannot plus, be more yeah. excited. Yeah, it's an odd hodgepodge of like inspirational fantasy, Forrest Gump melodrama, and just for the record. This will be Robert Zemeckis's third bomb in a row after Ally, the Brad Pitt, Marion Cotard vehicle, and uh, Man on Wire before that. Those were all DOA. And that very well may be, <laughs> but we, we need to pretend that we don't know that. Let's yeah. just go in and pretend that it is the next Forrest Gump and just see where that takes us. I want to go in as high as we can, both marijuana-ly and uh marijuana <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh both marijuana lee marijuana lee and spiritually and yeah. open-mindedly yeah yeah i mean my mind's wide open for the record i've not seen a zemeckis film in 19 years Shit. I, what? I, I i gave up on him a long ago oh, wow Bishky. i saw castaway and then when he came out with the Polar Express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Polar I, Express was. I was oh, like, man, I, I was in, like, I don't want anything. I to was do in with grad that. school when Polar Express came out, which I've never seen, but I'll never forget coming into school Monday morning and one of my screenwriting teachers going, "Hey, did you see the Polar Express? Cost them 150 million dollars, and all they got were a bunch of kids with dead eyes." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Zemeckis took a hard turn. I've heard he went into the CG nightmare land. Yeah, I think I think he he went into the zone of uh, we can do it, but should we do it? Yeah, uh, which happens to a lot of a, a lot, lot of directors. A lot of filmmakers consider themselves artists, like Picasso, and like this is his like Cubist period or Blue period this is or what? Dead eyed. Period. Yeah, this is his dead eyed, uncanny valley period. Um, <laughs> I think these directors just get antsy like they've conquered the world and then they're like now what Mm -hmm. you know and they don't want to play it safe they don't want to keep making the same they don't want to keep making you know back to the future over and over again so they just they take things in a direction that not everybody follows which you got to applaud the wherewithal to try to do that whether or not the movies work or whether or not they're i mean even watchable that's another matter entirely i just like that this movie we're about to see seems very sincere. Like yeah. it seems yeah. sincere Ernest to fuck. a to a hilarious fault. Yeah, degree. I think Steve Carell's kind of in a mid mid career Robin Williams phase he where is. he's doing. That's like, a good point. That's yeah, a great point. Where he's doing like very serious kind of Jacob the Liar or Patch what Adams. What dreams may come. Yeah, all those, yeah. Yeah, and and Ben Stiller's got a touch of that, too. And Bill Murray had that for a little yeah. bit. Like, they, they're like, okay, I'm tired of being the clown. Uh, yeah. Let me show you what I can do. But Steve Carell is doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on it lately. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we're ready to accept that, especially considering this resurgence with millennials of The Office. I did not, I did not see that coming. Yeah. But they love The Office. The mm-hmm. Office is huge again. So, you know, I don't know how that's gonna gonna go with where where he's headed. You know? Yeah, he's got a lot of clout, Steve Carell, and he and he gets to pick and choose his, his projects carefully. This guy doesn't need to work, and he does consider himself a serious, you know, like Oscar winning actor. Um, Welcome or, to Marwin. Or, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Marwin, brother. Let's see how you do it. Uh, I'm 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 tired of speculating. The the buildup has been so immense. We gotta we gotta storm the Burbank Castle. We got some special guests coming too. We got some special guests, some surprise guests. Here we come, 2019. Here we come. Welcome to Marwin, y'all. Charge! Oh my god, guys, oh, we are back. Fuck, we are back. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> You're making Bishki swear, Marwin. What are you doing to him? Marwin Cole. Before we get to the schnapps, I just have to say, I thought this was going to be the best way to kick off 2019, and you know it, motherfucker, it was. So, <laughs> let's hear that schnapps, brother Bishki. When a devastating <laughs> attack shatters Mark Hogenkamp, played by Steve Carell, and wipes away all his memories. No one expected what? No one expected. Put a little sauce on okay, it. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> when a devastating attack shatters Mark Hogan Camp Corral and wipes away all memories, no one expected recovery. Putting together pieces <laughs> from his old and new life, Mark meticulously creates a wondrous town where he can heal and be heroic. As he builds an astonishing art installation, a testament to the most powerful women he knows. Mm. Through his fantasy world, he draws strength to triumph in the real one. Nice snobs. Before we get to the movie, let's start by saying that there was a phone going off. Somebody's phone. A grenade someone just, left behind. Just going off during the trailers, yeah. during all, all the trailers. All the 20 minutes. Imagine 20 minutes of trailers, the phone ringing. And you can't really, like, there's a you know there's a lot of uh, calamity going on on screen. And, and so everyone's getting angry. Yeah, everyone's checking their phones. Out. I'm everyone's checking my phone. Everyone's looking at me because it sounds like it's coming, <laughs> it sounds like it's coming straight from Bishki. Turn up and your phone. Bishki's track record. Do not disturb. Bishki's, <laughs> Bishki's track record is as such that if you remember, during Peppermint... <laughs> 
when they're looking for peppermint in the quinceanera <laughs> store, I oh, was hearing dude. some Italo disco. Yes, yeah, Sp- like, Spotify turned on. I was mix. like, I was like, mixed with the soundtrack. I was like, this, Ooh, the choice. music supervisor uh, like, is, like, is like on point. Sound. This is like right <laughs> is on point with their weird weird uh, picks. But no, it was Bitchkey's uh, Spotify going off in his pocket. That's correct. But so, this time it was a poor person's phone from a previous show that had lost it, and they were calling it. They were calling it oh, constantly. So right, it was right under my seat. It was under the seat <laughs> but i was sure it was bishki and i was very embarrassed for us all and, no, I, shut and, it dude shut it the, my the, phone's uh, never made that no, sound no. i i knew it, it like didn't exciting. sound like it was a, a factory I, it default not, ring it was, yeah, it was not it was an iPhone. Bad it ring. was not an iphone sound it was very foreign it was like a flip phone and it was like a but flip. the the tone of voice the the righteous indignation yeah. from the audience you, was you were first was oh. too, <laughs> yeah I, I was like, like hey i was like shut off your fucking shut phone. it <laughs> In the dark. To but no in one. the dark to no one. <laughs> <laughs> Vaguely well, over was, to Brother Bishy. There was like, yeah, I was looking at him. But it sounds the, like you. The best was this this, this woman with just, the, I, can, I could never reproduce her tone. But no, it was shit. so scolding. It cut straight to the bone. She said, Airplane mode. <laughs> Airplane mode. Wow, that was. Oh it. my god! But Bishki fell on the grenade for us. He found yeah. the phone. He had to crawl out. And, and you he, missed. He, I missed the a couple minutes. You missed the opening it's action most, sequence. Most exciting part <laughs> yeah. of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that wow. brings us seamlessly into the movie itself, the movie proper. Welcome. Yeah, tell to me what world. happened in that opening. <laughs> okay. Over the skies of Belgium, in World War Two. Steve Carell's action figure persona, Captain Hoagie, launch into it. is flying over uh, a war zone, and he gets shot down. And he gets out of his plane, and his feet are on fire, so he has to find new shoes. He finds a discarded suitcase with women's garments in it, and including high heels. So... Okay. He puts on the high heels, starts That's starting down the street. In, yeah. That's where you came in. Okay. <laughs> and then he's confronted by these Nazis who threaten to kill him. And they're like, come here, come here. And he doesn't want to walk out of these tall weeds to show his footwear. And then he does. And it's re- they act like it's a reveal again, even though we've already seen it. So already I'm kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I trust the storytelling here completely. <laughs> yeah, this was a dark glimpse into the mind of the director and co-writer, Bob Zemeckis. Weird, fetishistic, like... Well, uh, it, yeah, it's fetish on fetish on fetish. But, but, yeah. but it's mm-hmm. so weird. It's like a white male cis dude uh, telling the story. Right, which just makes it even weirder and more commodified. Well, yeah, like, there's a lot. There's <clears throat> a lot. There's a lot to dig through. But mm-hmm. I want to preface by saying, this is based on a real guy, and they. I feel like they almost use that as a shield at the end. Like, see, see. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So what we're talking, we're let's be very clear. Like the real guy, there's there's a lot of things that they bring over to this movie from him. A lot of you know different crevices to his personality. And that's all well and good, you know, that's great, but it's how it's handled. It's all in the handling yeah, that I, mean. I think <laughs> that I think is makes it extra strange and extra what I mean, what well, what, what even is yeah, this no, movie? You, you totally ring a bell there because you're watching it and you're like this this is an extremely complicated character yes uh this this is not it's it, i don't think it would please fans of like the ptsd crowd because it's like all the war stuff mm-hmm. counters all the the shoe and foot fetish stuff which is very buried in the lead it's very buried in the trailers you, you don't know yes. this movie this movie's it's, about a foot it's fetish it's all about yeah, foot like a rampant a foot fetish um movie. and he talks there's extended scenes of him talking about why he feel you know why he loves not only collecting these shoes but wearing them and and feeling the essence of a woman the you know, these, of are, these a are complicated woman. you know themes running yeah. out he includes everything zemeckis included everything well, it's just how I it's mean, handled but it's handled like for scum it's about yes. his like, mom or anything i'm thinking like there's got to be a connection there they didn't go yeah. there they don't, this, even, they don't even show you anything well, he doesn't remember. the only thing the movie cheats <laughs> right. yeah. it, it his, does make me want to see the documentary yes yeah. because the, obviously there was something going on with this guy that is not it remotely captured in this movie, right? Like, right. Like, and yeah. let, let me I, also before yeah. before we dig through it too much, c- c- 
fucking go to this movie. God, nobody's going. Like nobody's gonna see this movie. Who is this for? You, Who is this it's movie for, for nobody, and it's no genre, and it it doesn't make any sense. It's waiting Whoa. for you. I don't know how he got this green. Oh my I mean, god! I know Steve Carell has value, but like holy shit, we're so, some favors. So the, oh, it, it follows trends of Zemeckis, though. I mean, it, yes. has, it has an alternate, alternate <laughs> you think? visual, an alternate visual Dude, it's all reality. Mo-cab. It's all the. It's the only reason why he made this. So I obviously, think, I yeah. care obviously, about he was attracted to that 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 side of the well, story. But I also thought, like, you could interchange Carell with, say, Tom Hanks. Like, he, well, Tom Hanks could have played. Well, let's let's give Marlon a little context Ball. of what's going on. Yeah, There's one major true. beat in the movie. Like we said in the snops, he has like a stable of women that he keeps in this fake town. And it's all the women he knows, and they're represented by these action figures. And it is like he's a pimp. He's yeah. like a, like, it's, it's like a, a brothel. He's like a serial killer, though. He's got yes. this like, weird... He collects yeah. them. He's got, he's got this weird serial killer vibe for the whole movie, pretty much. Where, you know, if you had Ted Levine as this guy, yes. it, it would make it all the more like creepy, Pat, Pat uncomfortable. Oswald. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know you how know. the documentary plays out, but it seems like the modern art world, it's just like the modern art world is like messed up. In my, like, in my like, memory, the let's documentary... Let's take advantage of this guy who's yes. got these fetishes... And takes these funny photos of and make women. Making folk, folk art that we can exploit. Yeah. Exactly, the but doc- I don't know if the documentary See, comes out. The documentary just doesn't. But who cares? Let's just take yeah, the movie. Yeah. Let's in, not so, even take yeah. the documentary. The documentary yeah. is completely separate. This, this one visual. But as a movie, but as a movie, it feels very, very contrived that all these women are so supportive of him. It and is not treating him like a total fucking freak. Which is like what he is. They feel sorry but, for him. But I mean. brother Nathan and sister May are here, by the way. Yeah, we we just jumped right in. Surprise! Surprise! Oh, they should know our you, voices by now. You guys heeded the call, and and we love you for it. So yeah, there, there's all these women that are almost like psychotically supportive of this guy who who is as played as embodied by Steve Carell is creepy. He is. He gives the creepiest mm-hmm. gazes. He is uncomfortable to be around. He's two yeah. degrees away from strangling them. With There's la- layers to it. He wears like dad clothes, but he also wears like hookah beads. And, you know, and, I want, I'm not really sure what they were doing with his. I want look. to open an Etsy store that only sells the necklace that the Steve beads. Carell wears. Which they, Marwin beads. Which, Marwin they ne- beads. which they never commented. They never commented on, I thought on for it. Sure, he would mention. I think it's to make him look like a, a cut more scene, casual. Cool I, I, I think in 2019, you think I could pull that off if oh. I wear those? I think I could. Yeah. I want to wear like Paci- Pacific like... Sunwear clothing only with those beads on. It's definitely yeah. Time um, to... So we meet we meet his friends around town, and they're not characters. They're like the the one who works at the hobby shop that has a crush on him, played by Merritt Weaver, who I thought did a, did a fine job with what she was given. Which was a strange, strange role to be in. Everyone's she's, in a strange the friend zone. Yeah. She's, she's, she's fawning over him, but she's in the friend. So, the so, booth. Co- so the clear booth. they're going to wind up together. She's, she's being she's, friend she's, zoned. She just takes care of them. Like they're so codependent. Yeah, she's being friend zoned by by this dude. Which is a rough role to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I never thought and he's about that. Objectifying her breasts by having her doll. Well, I thought, how about the, the, there seems May, to be an May, arc how, to it, how did you feel about the treatment of the women in this? Like right off the bat. Well, he he objectifies them, but then has them be his hero. So it's it's a weird duality of. Yeah, how the, he sees women. They're objectified I mean, throughout, and then at yeah. the end, he they sort think they can. <laughs> they think well, they think they can cover it by having him yell, "Women are the yeah. saviors of the world." Well, how about that? No, I felt no, like yeah, I was... felt like he there was me too in the air. I mean, this yeah. movie might have taken a long time to, to make. Yes, Zemeckis is including that's these, a good point. Including mm. the, the goat woman where it's dunking over her boobs, and and women run out of fleeing you know action scenes with their tops off. These are the action figures, mind you. They're... But he's sexualizing them continually. And at the end, there is like a hey, rah rah, women are my savior. So I, yeah, I, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel like, I feel like nobody. If you're still listening to this, you haven't <laughs> heeded the call. You haven't gone to the movie, so you're not going to know what the fuck we're talking about. We we need it to objectifies we, women, Lucas. Yeah. Unfortunately, we need to provide more context. I know you're hurting, but 
It's hard Help to out if you these. can, and we can well, get he, through this. No, he meets it's, Leslie Mann. It's, yeah, so the movie takes place after the the, the trauma, but but a bunch like, of Nazis the, beat him up. But it's yeah. but it's not, it's not resolved Skinheads. yet in the sense that the defendants Old have folks. to be sentenced. So, yeah, so, so that's, there's no closure yet. That's like, hanging over. There's it. a lot of anxiety. Three years. Yes, we see this guy has clearly PTSD from the incident, and his lawyer is pressuring him to, to come in and give a personal statement to try to like. Yeah. So these guys won't get a slap on the wrist. And, and what's funny is yeah. they don't ever tell you what they get sentenced. You know? No, so, yeah. so it's, no. it's pointless. It's, like, it's, it's just, I thought it's just to be a keep lot the movie courtroom. moving. So you're like, oh, there's there's a court. I was case. waiting for the whole third act to be a courtroom. You know, I stand here. I know victim. they didn't do that. Oh. I thought the mocap Captain Hoagie was going to deliver the the. In, in I thought sort of did. He sort of did. But in addition. In addition to the friendly women, there is this witch of Belgium blue fairy. Blue fairy. that is blue that flies around and fucks everything up for for our hero. Yeah, she's like out of wrinkle in time or something. Yes. Yeah, really. Yeah, she can point her gloved hand and send someone into the future. Yeah, she she's sends a... people uh, fifty thousand light year, fifty million light years into the future with a touch oh. of her hand or whatever. So that's Strange the bad. Stuff happens in Marwin. That's the bad guy in Marwin, <laughs> and so her presence looms large over the proceedings. So anyway, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Leslie Mann moves in across the street. He's instantly just like letching on her, just like spying Keeping on her through on a periscope. Her. And she's yeah. not creep. Well, yeah, and she's not creeped out. She's in not the creeped least. out. Like when they finally meet, and he's like. And then he make, immediately makes a doll, and he's like, that's Nicole, and that's her name. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole without, without an e. e. She's not creeped out. But when she first she, discovers it his doll, it's, he like tor- it's like a torture scenario, and she's, like, so affected by it. Yes, yeah, so like, let's, let's talk about invested, that. But, but her character is I'm so rolling my eyes a... so hard. So she comes mm-hmm. over to his yard where he has all his stuff set up. And he... Genuinely interested. He, he <laughs> shows her his tableau. And she is shocked. She looks in the church and she's like, "What's going on in there?" My mind went to an orgy, a doll orgy, I thought, I thought, yeah, because yeah. because that's where women, that's you know? where everything leads with him. Like he's very, everything's very sexual with him. So she looks in there, and then we see what's happening, and it's the hoagie character shirtless getting whipped and tortured by nazis and his back is bloody mm-hmm. and it is fucking graphic graphic yeah. which again if this were a movie that had like Ryan Gosling in grit kind of gritty Tom mode Hanks. Just think Tom and Hanks. no no I'm not thinking Tom Hanks I'm thinking like <laughs> That's a what gr- we wanted for this bro. I'm thinking like a grittier angle on this I mm-hmm. think it's the director w- was the wrong choice. Steve Carell was the wrong choice. Oh yeah, and the movie like, was the, the movie choice. was the wrong choice. <laughs> but I'm just <laughs> saying the only the only little balance beam that it could have had a chance to work is if you. You, you don't make it Forrest Gump. You don't have sweeping score to confuse you and think that this is oh, heartwarming. Yeah, because yeah, Alan Silvestri does his damnedest to make your to pull your heartstrings. It, but there's, there's no, nothing oh. heartwarming about. It's a sad kind of tale. But if you would it play is. it more honestly, yeah. it would be way more interesting. This is they're trying to shoehorn it into. I again, I don't know what genre this is, but they're trying it's to shoehorn it into a new genre. That doesn't and shouldn't exist. It's like an inspirational yeah. drama, but to me, it's as flat as a fucking pancake. And well, like, I, but my big problem for almost like all of it was just like, why should anybody care about this schlub? Like, he's got his own place, he's got a job, he's like chilling, he's got enough time to play with dolls. Like, mo- most people don't have that kind of, you know. I mean, I think that's lifestyle. the problem. Is like, I was just kind of like, why am I watching this? Like, why, like, <laughs> why, why should anyone give a fuck about this guy's survival, like, or his trauma? Luke, or Lucas leaned over to me and said, "They should have killed him." <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But that's yeah, but I said that. I said, but I said that after world. he put all his dolls to bed and he was like tucking them in, and it was just so creepy and, gro- yeah. and it grossed me out because it did feel like more. It's the hand- so sentimental. Yeah, so I was like, sentiment. this guy's gonna murder someone. Sorry, Bisky, what were you gonna say? Well, I was just like, Zemeckis might be the worst director to try to portray someone with mental illness. Yeah. Right? he's just so conventional. Yeah, and he's too glib. and Carell is not good at playing someone with mental illness. Like he's just. Well, that's the other problem. He's it's like t- like a little tear in his eye all the time. It's like Carell like... is so preloaded with comedy gold for us. Mm-hmm. Like, like think about all. Doesn't have to do much. All your office memories. But the problem is, in this particular movie presented like this, when he tells a joke or when he does something that's meant to be funny, 
it's undercut by all the creepiness. It's like if you go to see, like, Jeffrey Dahmer do stand-up, you know? And he tells a joke that's supposed to be funny, and you're like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you're a serial killer. You can't get into it the way I it think... wants you to, the way the music is trying to tell you to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Zemeckis and crew here really... Really, sand, really going to sandbag people. Like, think about think about the people that are going to go over this or win over this during the holiday season. There they were go, little kids in this, this theater. <laughs> there were little kids like, watching this Nazi torture scenario and foot fetishry gone you're dealing, haywire. You're dealing with like so, autofocus, so you know, confusing. like autofocus kind of dressed up, Disney-fied, you know, it, that, it, that kind of film. It is insane. Where you're dealing with real and, grisly human and experience here. Not even just the sexual stuff, but the violence. So when these when these women of Marwin attack Nazis as the dolls as, as the dolls, dolls, it is machine gun overkill. They obliterate obliterate these guys like they they just keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting. It is insane. Yeah, you could just hear Zemeckis getting off on the mocap. Yeah, they, they put mean, Molotov cocktails in their hands, light them on fire, and then shoot them up with machine guns. Another problem with this movie is it makes a point, and then it remakes it, and then sometimes it re-remakes re it. Re-underlines yeah. it, yeah. So like, There's a lot of exposition. Like when the, oh, when the, the Nazis <laughs> when the Nazis get, like, you know, uh, turned into hamburger by these machine guns, Carell makes a point of being like, but they come back. They always seem to come back referencing that Nazism is kind of coming back right now. And then they keep doing it. It's like, we don't even need you to say it once. This is mm -hmm. this movie is coming out in 2018. We get it, dude. You are killing Nazis left and right, yeah. and they keep coming back. Well, explain, we get it. That, that, you know, that happens again when he's explaining his shoe fetish. He's like, it's I wear them because it's the essence of a woman. I, you know, uh, essence of a dame. I the love essence of a dame. The, That's a says, crucial like, distinction. And he says, like, I love dames. Leslie Mann has an estranged bully boyfriend. Nazi. Oh, that, that doesn't that doesn't get resolved. Kurt. Kurt. Yeah. Kurt, yeah. Like. You think he's gonna wreck Marwin or something because he oh, looks I at he it? I could have swore that, that happened. Yeah. He was gonna he, he was gonna wreak havoc, but then yeah. he doesn't do anything. He just yeah. he lightly kind of scares him. Yeah, you know, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. And calls him a creep, which he and is. calls him a creep, which he goddamn which is. Which man, Dude. sometimes they just cut back to totally Corral totally, just creeping. Totally veers into taxi driver territory when he finally goes over to Leslie Mann's house for tea. Yes, yeah. she invites him for tea. Again, again, yeah. she is completely open-hearted and interested in every little thing he says, no matter how creepy he gets. She's giving him some of her old shoes, for Christ's sake. The film sets it up that she's accepting of his, hey, this ain't to bother me at all, his right. shoe fetish. And, so, and, and he's like, okay, her saying that, man, it's on. Like, so so he's he's been he's been way. he's been basically having the action figure representations of themselves fucking and he's like showing her the photos he's like they can only make out after between midnight and the moment that it's darkest before the dawn because evidently that's when deja can't see them cuz she wants to ruin everything that gets close to <laughs> yes, him yes yes so he, he's been taking pictures and advancing this relationship he goes over to her house for tea, shows him these pictures of Captain Hoagie proposing to Nicole, and then he proposes to with her. A, with a purple heart. With a purple heart because he can't afford a ring or can't find one. Yeah, and She knew it was coming. And man. what a weird scene that was. He Very stays awkward. down on he his knees. He shoots it in a wide, like in a master, and he lets the whole thing play out. <laughs> just <laughs> just forever. And yeah. you're like, I, I started to look around in the audience yes, a little bit at yes, that moment. Yes, there was an too. older man. Do you see? He was right in front of you. There was an yes. older man. What and was he, he looked doing? At it. His mouth was agape, and he looked at the screen. <laughs> My mouth was agape through this whole fucking <laughs> and then movie. He, he grabbed a big old hand, handful of popcorn and ate it. Just, just yeah. shoved it in his face. Yeah. <laughs> it, but there was this huge like lag time, and I was like, that's perfect, you know? Oh. oh. It was so awkward. It was like a blast in the I, screen. It was like I, a, a, I honestly didn't know if he was out. just going to go... Like, mur like just go nuts violent. and yeah. kill her. I thought he was gonna trash the place. Him for freezing, sure. him freezing in that in that locked that position where he's presenting is even more bizarre. Yeah. It kind of kind of segues to what I thought was maybe the first salad dragon scene. Or, or yeah, let's my discuss favorite. salad dragon. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. there's a whole salad, corral. Like, there's there's a number in the there's first a, act. Like a in the, salad in the first thirty yeah. minutes. He's at the hobby shop. And oh, they've man. established that, you know, he's got to testify or he's got to, like, give a, a victim's impact statement. Yes. And he's like, I don't know. I don't oh, know. God, yes. I, and, and oh, then, I'm having then, flashbacks and then, now. And then, yeah, and then she's like, the whole, the whole scene's got this weird setup where she's like, 
do you want some coffee? And he's like, nah. And she's like, but you always drink coffee. He's like, I know. Mm-hmm. She's like, you drink yeah, it like five yeah. times a day. He's like, yeah, I'm trying to cut down. She's like, yeah, but it's decaf. He's like, ah, it's too long, but it's instant. And he's like, I don't know. Are you sure? It's like, okay, like, let's get the cup of coffee. And it's kind of like at first, you don't, know, it's just bad writing. Yes. You just think like, oh, this is Zemeckis like winging <laughs> it. Just winging but, it. But then later in the same scene. Oh, it pays off. She's like, hey, I got a new doll for you. You're going to love it. <laughs> like, to it's it so good. And she like opens it up and it's like the scariest like Nazi <laughs> SS the doll. Aryan it's like brother. a fully like decked out Nazi it's doll. like swashbuckle tatted on its I arm. I cracked up every time I saw that And doll, as like. he's looking at it, like, as she's pulling it out of like unboxing <laughs> it, the, the the tea starts to boil. The kettle yep, of water starts, starts to boil. To, yes. starts then to. he like hits the counter like he gets kind of panicking and he knocks the TV <laughs> remote yes. and the batteries fall out yes. so you can't change <laughs> the station. So, so, but it so, turned the volume, the volume way up. And, and it just so happens the TV's playing like a news broadcast of what happened to him. With like his attackers on the screen. Like, yes, all doing these a perp walk. triggers going Just off. This guy. And, and, I, and I start getting worked up. I just start laughing because it's, yes. it's actually kind of genius. And what's even funnier is Zemeckis pushes it to the level where the, where the woman like grabs the remote and puts the batteries in and goes to change the channel but the remote the, the batteries fall out again like yes. he's like yeah, milking yeah. it like he's it's just ama- to- it's to- an amazing to- scene to- totally and like- the whole time the camera Orchestra. is doing these extreme close up <laughs> zooms of Corel just flipping just show out show you how crazy <laughs> he is yeah. but looking <laughs> funny but looking funny doing it because oh. it's Steve Carell with like a doofus haircut oh. like the haircut didn't necklace, help him and that neck- <laughs> hookah necklace dude. Lucky necklace. he does a lot of turn to the camera goes like <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Both, both okay. as both as Hoagie. Oh, I think we can connect this pretty seamlessly to the act to Salad Dragon Prime. <laughs> Salad Dragon number oh, one. Salad dude, Dragon number one. Bishki, do you want to take the honors on we this? We needed that setup. Okay, just... so we're going into the courtroom, uh, and he's facing his attackers, and he's he's already nervous about it, and then he sees the Nazi symbol on like the skinheads um, thing, and then his the Nazi. Uh, morphs into the the Nazi doll in the courtroom, and then everyone starts. He he morphs into his into his Barbie figure self, and <laughs> Captain Hoagie, Captain Hoagie, like and then it just goes mayhem. The judge gets shot, blood in shoots her in the head. The oh, judge man. gets shot in Out the of head. Out of her chair, blood. her legs yeah. pop up like like. Dead. And he's blood, in stilettos. Blood, yeah. He's, he's in stilettos. He's in stilettos. Blood on the wall. Firing and weapon. it's just total mayhem in the courtroom. Everyone's getting killed. Everyone's firing guns. All the all the women are there, I think, from the, the, from the from like Marwin. In real life, the bailiff would have jumped that fence and in, in, <laughs> Duray, real said. life. But in it's real all life. in his. It's all in Corell's imagination. But it is bonkers. It is like. But then it morphs like back, and they actually show, they hold on Corell like, morphine, like Michael Jackson, black and white. Morph. Like, you There's see, a full morph. You see people morph. Like, like it's that bad. It's great. Like, like, <laughs> it, it, is, it is a Michael Jackson, black or white moment. It's a total but throwback. But you know what's even funnier? Oh, That's not the salad dragon I'm thinking about. Oh, really? Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking I got something to put in it, right? So... I, Nathan, <laughs> no, well, May, no. do, you, do you guys have a different one? I want to hear. Okay, wanna, my yours might be the one I'm thinking. Mine is. <laughs> there's so many to choose from. Mine is Corell is sitting home watching a porno movie. Oh, okay. well, we'll get to this. We'll get yeah, to that. Let's get yeah. to the absence of the pornography angle. You know. Yes. Oh, there's yeah, there's yeah, shoes. Yeah. There's pornography. Uh, and the real guy. I mean, the real guy. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. To you. The real guy is stacks and stacks. Right, and, but you know, it's like it's the way that. it's handled. You don't expect. <laughs> Like if if Forrest Gump, you know, is sitting on a bench talking about chocolate, you don't expect him to go back to his apartment and like huff glue and masturbate like, into a like you know back football door helmet. I like the backdoor girl. Oh, okay, God. so he's sitting at home watching pornography. Does anyone remember the name back, of the the backdoor? It was called no no no. That was mentioned later. It's called it's called Wicked Hotel Encounters. Mm-hmm. Right, right, and it's obviously shot by Zemeckis and, and some very weak. Uh, oh, jeez, you think it was shot for it? VHS yeah. glitches on it. Mm-hmm. He's watching it. This, He's the best. This, can do it. this busty woman is is in her is in is in her hotel room bending over. It's the camera, you know, it starts as, that way as pornography tends to do. It leers at her at her body, and this man walks in who is played for laughs. Like they're they're like having fun with this old porno set, and the guy is the guy says something like, "Do you need a hand?" 
And then yeah. she's like, yeah, why don't you come over here? You got something for me? And then the guy's like, yeah, I got... And then he morphs, <laughs> that's not, yeah. he morphs into the Nazi doll, and it's like, sing Heil! Yeah. And then Corel no, flips. Like, they're talking flips. about, I'll put something in your coffee. He's like, I got something to put in it. And he turned into a German. Corel flips the fuck out. Our, our row lost it. Like, you guys, oh, my God. Nobody else laughs. Like, nobody, yeah, how everybody could nobody else, else like, laugh at that? Well, because, uh, no, I'll tell you why. Because you're, because you're caught between comedy yeah. and nazi ptsd oh, seriousness dude, like this is serious man like These guys they, have some issues yeah. and the, and they they give you that hairpin turn because they're obviously playing this retro porn for laughs and then it turns into a cg nazi doll but then corell's trying to act seriously like it, oh, he literally says right after that happens he says i'm cracking up I'm yeah. cracking up! I'm oh my god! Oh. It's so uh, it, oh. it is not a funny issue. Like it, the, no, no joke has really ever worked in that. You know, it's just it's just a dead zone. This this was handled so this prop- movie is centered around preposterously. And they throw in all these Forrest Gump musical cues to try to get us back oh. in the movie. The real okay. happy upbeat stuff. And too. then yeah. and then the hail mary. The Hail Mary is, Hail Marys in this is uh, okay, the the Wicked Witch of Belgium, Deja, says, you need to build me a time machine. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. this was uh, a this disgrace. Was, this was like Ready Can Player One. Can you guys water. explain no, that? But I think, I think, disgrace. Yeah, Lucas, you got an opinion about the Back in the Future references. So, so, yeah, so the Deja doll, played by Diane Kruger, <laughs> who is like a blue Barbie with a blue arm. Yeah. <laughs> Who, by the way, doesn't like live in Marwin, like, but lives in Steve Carell's house in like a cuckoo clock yeah, like made a, out of like blue, <laughs> blue rocks, ocean that, 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 yeah. yeah, and it's so fetishistic, like it is oh, so man. fucking creepy. It is like clearly <laughs> like like a false idol that like, he worships, yeah. right? Man, oh, yes, like, it is. It's, all about this one. <laughs> it's like Jason's mom's head in yeah. Friday the Thirteenth, and so. <sighs> So in one of his, I can't remember if it was like a fantasy when he was awake or if it was a nightmare when he was dreaming. Fantasy and reality blend together but basic, in this film. But basically she's like, you need to build a time machine. Well, I, I didn't understand, and I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why either because they needed to go into I, the future for some reason. I thought they were going to go in the past before but the But then you understand. The but so, so yeah, and, and Corral wakes up and is like... Oh my god! I need to build a time machine, and it's like the, the fucking divine intervention. I mean, he is like like <laughs> oh, a man possessed. Give so me a sign. I he gotta runs build it to his part time job, which I I guess is the same bar that he got his ass beat at, yeah, which is even bar, weirder. It's like, back? how are you gonna like he you makes, know, move on when he you're, makes like, meatballs there, and there's much talk of meatball dude, there. Meatball Max, Tuesday. Imagine Thursday. eating those meatball meatballs. Thursday. Is it on Thursday? Um, oh, I might never eat meatballs again. Okay, um, so everyone knows about. So he shows up to the bar and he asks his boss, "Can I have this lava lamp?" And the guy's like, "You know." Oh, sure, yeah, if you clean it out, you can have it. You know, it's like more bad dialogue. And so he converts the lava lamp oh. into like a DeLorean esque <laughs> oh, uh, no. toy car. And, and, it, and it looks like, you know, the prop departments had a field day with the it. And the wheels turn up. The wheels and, and, flip and then, up. And then, and then yeah, just when you think, yeah. just in case like the, the audience like, it doesn't timer. get it, Robert Zemeckis like underlines it yes. where he goes, well, and 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 and, 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 and Steve Carell's holding it up towards his his Deja doll, where he's yes. like, "Look, honey, like I did it. <laughs> yeah, I, I made did, it for I us." And then there's like a pause, and he goes, "Well, yes, of course it flies." And he presses a button, and all four tires go from like vertical, you know, to, to horizontal flight. or to flight mode. And there was like two guys in the front row that yeah. like high five yeah. and were like, "Yeah, Marty like, McFly, yeah, yeah, Marty McFly, <laughs> back to the future." I was like, what? there was an Alan Silvestri little cute. I was like, <laughs> what, are, was what were those bros doing at this movie? Like, they were dormant until <laughs> they that, saw the DeLorean. <laughs> until they saw the DeLorean, they were activated. <laughs> we know that. And that's exactly what Zemeckis wanted to happen there. He's like, yeah. if I've lost anybody, I won't, because this is Oscar material. <laughs> yeah. But if I've lost anybody, I'll get him back there. And God, did he get those dudes? Yeah. Those yeah. dudes yeah. are really strange that it goes towards. And, and, and uh, he takes it. Of back and, and he takes like it a that. step further because he actually, you know, puts it into the like the plot itself, where uh, like like there's literally a scene like a Mar- 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 Marty will. McFly and Doc trying to get the almanac from Biff, where where Steve Carell's Captain Hoagie's like leaning out of the the time machine trying to grab 
uh, stiletto. Stiletto shoe. <laughs> that is I mean, very, yeah, I, love, to, I love yeah. the tone of voice. Like, uh, yeah, to, <laughs> stiletto. To, to, to grab the stiletto shoe, and then like you know. He, he winds up jumping out of the uh, car just as, like, Deja gets sent into the future. <sighs> and there are lightning trails. There are fucking yes, blue sky, flame yeah. lightning trails yes. in the sky. Just, and that's, like, geez, Zemeckis just, thing. like, raping my childhood. Like, just, oh. This, but just, he must, uh, he's, throwing in, he's throwing in these things. It, it, it feels like a personal film, which is really... Which the, is weird. Yes. Which is the success of I, this. I could, I could get that Zemeckis saw the documentary yep. and was like... Oh my god! I want to. I, I want to put I, my stank if, on this. If I ever got beat to death, or within, <laughs> or with, or with an inch of my life, and I lost all my memories, well, yeah, I'm sure I would start directing diorama, you know, things too, or whatever. Like, I bet you that was like his angle <laughs> sure. to like get into sure. it. But then, yeah, with the huh. foot fetish stuff and all the other stuff, he was like, oh, I don't know, we'll just like he went ahead with it, it anyway. all. He yeah. went ahead with it anyway. Mm. When you see those down the road, you're like, do we avoid these? I mean, how do we paint a... What, you think about you got to paint the good with the bad if you're trying to go after something. But I, Zemeckis, what is he going after? I don't movie? know. What would it feel like to be at the premiere of this movie? Yeah. Oh. Like a Are friends there cheers? and family. Are there cheers? A friends and family no. premiere of this movie. Mm. Especially the awkward proposal with the purple oh. heart scene where he just freezes there. Because they really did think it was positioned for Oscar glory. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I see the human interest. I mean, I see it. The, there it is. The concept is great. The concept you know I mean? is there's a through line. The I subject mean, matter is deep dish pizza. Like you could do so much with it. But I'm kind of happy that the wrong people got involved because this movie is documented. It is in the pantheon of movies that have been made. People are going to have to deal with this. Zemeckis completists are going to have to watch this and they're going to have to try to figure out what happened. And I love I love that that's the case. Well, yeah, you're saying you're saying like the, the there's a gritty in, in your mind there's a gritty Ryan Gosling-esque version. Yeah. But once you start going into the whimsical Animated sequences, yeah, which this you, movie you, does. You, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. You just can't. You no, can't you take know, it out of no, there. No, and you know what's interesting too? The irony is, if you made the movie exactly as is, but instead of the mocap, shot the Ryan Gosling grittier version of that. Yeah, it would make the PTSD so much more palpable yes. for the audience because it's, it's like, not holy shit, this is scary. These because are like there's these not are, a CG distancing, right? right. So mm -hmm. what do we think about these dead-eyed uh, oh, CG? I mean, dude, what, what is his deal with it? I don't what, get why it. does he? Yeah, I think they're why? better than Polar Express. Yeah, but still though, like why? Why spend the the second half of your life, the second half of your career, <laughs> just 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 fawning over like that's the hill you're gonna die on that's what you're gonna be remembered for thinking like of the really hundreds of visual artists that have went to work on this movie. oh every day think oh. about all their internal grumbling oh my god that they never let him hear they're doing it about a foot fetish <laughs> <laughs> oh god, a foot fetish i mean who got beat up and not in any kind of war context either no so, you know like i keep thinking the documentary was officially like he this was this was ptsd and he, he served in the war and it was like a different timeline no. and they he moved got beat it up, up at a bar i think he was messed up to begin with he was a messed up drunk to begin with, like there's stories of him in the in the documentary. It doesn't mean he deserved it. Doesn't mean he deserved it. Okay, well let's uh, go, go see this fucking movie, guys. Come on, it uh, is an odd one. It uh, is an odd one. I think. I mean, <laughs> it is, it is out of control. Let's go to the bones, Bishki. You look like you're about to die. What's going <sighs> How on? How many times do we do this? Nineteen years since the scene is a Mexican film. <laughs> not, years. not without good reason. Uh, he is far <laughs> gone. It's like, uh, it's like if George Lucas <laughs> kept making Star Wars movies every other year or sure. so, and he just kept going. Like a, a once creative genius or like pop artist just kept churning stuff out, and now we're way down the pipeline and. This movie's a total package. It's got bad everything. I mean, this was rough. We're starting at the bottom in 2019. Bottom. Oh. No, it is bad. It is bad, 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 bad. <laughs> Woof. Whoa. You're kicking in all the teeth and running away. What? Oh. What? There's, oh there's my no god. Glimmer. It's because I wasn't sitting directly next to you. I think I could have influenced you a little bit. You were over there in pain. Yeah, I, I was. I I can't. I, we, it's all right. We're start, It's the beginning of the year. Let's start at the bottom. But I, Zemeckis is wow. Anyway. Okay, all right. You're entitled to your wolf. Is that your first wolf? No, I've had other wolves. Okay, <laughs> you've woofed before. I have woofed. You're before. a wolf version. I, I haven't heard a lot of wolves. So coming over. Oh, all right. Another one wolf. Yeah. All right. 
Um, Sister May, yeah. what do you what do you got? I want to hear your dissertation on what you just witnessed because you went in. I was like, I can't believe you heated the call today. Yeah, you New Year's to, Day. I'm, you wanted to this see this. This is the first day of the what year. What were you thinking? And you're sitting here in this hot ass Prius talking <laughs> talking Marwin with us. What do you got? Well, I was I was looking forward to seeing it. I thought that the preview looked like it could be a good drama. The dolls looked like it was gonna be like Janelle Monet doll. It was, yeah, like it was gonna be heart <laughs> so warming. Cute. Um, I love your optimism. I I was optimistic until I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have a genre. It, right. I wanted it to be a drama, and it wasn't. Really? But it also was. But it also. was. <laughs> well, it was with like in the dolls. So I didn't connect with Did it. Did you shed a tear? No. Oh. <laughs> no, none of us no did, tears. right? None of us, <laughs> no none of us shed, there's no tears in Marwin Call. <laughs> there's no crying no. in Marwin. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm gonna say it looked good though. Okay. Yeah. The the I had the mocap like like if it was a kids movie, which is probably why some kids were there. Oh yeah, it would have looked great. The kids stayed quiet, which was weird. Kids, they were. They, they didn't were captivated. understand what was happening. No, yeah. They don't understand Nazi torture and no. foot fetishism. <laughs> no, they're not, not yet. No, they understand more now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. Uh, so I'm gonna say um, one and a half. One and a half. Um, one and a half. Woo. Okay. All right, your sweet husband, brother mm. Nathan. What do you got going on? Well, okay, so like, <laughs> like I said, I can story time. You know, like you can see the human interest. There it is, right in front of your, front of your screen. I think, I think there, there, are, there is a movie here about this scenario where this guy was, his life was taken from him and beaten. I think there could be something real, really interesting there. And none of the beats, like none of the quiet beats, where they're trying to get you in, in these, in these little factors, work. Nothing, nothing worked there for me. Uh, what we get is a movie that I don't know. I don't know who it's for. I mean, the vets aren't going to be on your side because you got a no. PTSD story that involves a guy who, you know, cross dresses and all, all those all those other. The elements. veterinarians won't be on your side. The veterinarians the, won't the, be on your the side. The wolf puns. The hobby town people just won't be. On, no. You know, like the, I, I I do feel like we should have maybe looked a little deeper into his 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 disorder and being with him and and maybe. If you're not going to have him be a character, remove him even more. Have it be where it's mm. just like he's 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 someone that the characters are projecting in on him, or so, some, something where like his story Gump. is told through the women only. Yeah. Because um, once you once you once you sit with him, man, he's a creep. You know. He's, yeah, I don't want to hang out Carell's with him. Carell's been playing these creeps lately, uh, <laughs> really well. Like all you do is cut to him, and he's like a kind of a you know a, a, a frog on a log. He's like, hey, he smiles. <laughs> like, yeah, I I farted. <laughs> And, 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 and I like him, but I just, like, can he not find a role? A frog on a log! Can he not find a role where it's, like, he, he hasn't been able to do the thing that, like, Robin Williams, you know, where it's sometimes he can gut punch you. All of a sudden, he has sure, a performance sure. where he stops you dead. Carell hasn't had that for me yet. He There's a there's a real strong humanity there, but... Anyway, we got a weird duck movie here. I mean, I, I do, for the effects... Where and where and and yeah, this collection of cast and crew that made this with such heart yeah. and passion, and it's like this this script, you know. Okay, yeah. I give it one bone. One bone. Okay, I give it one bone. One silver star. All right. Oh, brother Lucas, mm-hmm. sweet, yeah. sweet yeah. brother Lucas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shadow, Join me, Lucas. Shadow. Yeah, this, no, this, don't uh, listen to him. No, this uh, I. Uh, don't listen to him. Like I really couldn't muster. You were in pain. I though. couldn't muster the open mind that I that I chanted up in the intro. I had to keep uh, hitting um, you and pointing up at the screen. I got to I gotta show hear, you. I got to hear this. Show you where Corral was. Because uh, <laughs> that's his career. Don't because know. this Captain trailer, up there, cowboy. I saw the original trailer where they tried to market this as an outright comedy, which was uh-huh. which was so bad. I didn't finish the trailer, mm. and then it was like a <laughs> month later <laughs> or two weeks later. They went. Oh, yes. do do over whoopsie do over yep. this was the real trailer he meant to drop and then more it, gumbo and it yeah and then it more had gumbo. hashtag it, more gumbo it had hashtag less comedy gumbo. and more gumbo hashtag no gumbo I thought I heard you yelling for more gumbo not gumbo no gumbo no gumbo Marwin. and so well, yeah when we walked into this 
I thought it was fitting that the lost cell phone, you know, was like setting the tone. It was warning us. Yeah. It was a warning. It was, like, it was warning definitely a warning. They and left it on purpose to disrupt the movie yeah. <laughs> and say, get out of the theater. The previous this show tomorrow. Oh, Don't enjoy tomorrow. your life. And so when it started, anymore. you know, I instantly was just like shocked at like how it did feel like a Toy Story movie, yes. you know, but then all of a sudden, yeah, hey, wait a minute, Story. like, is he talking about, like, the high heels, like, right off the bat, like, in that opening scene, like, yeah, his, his character as a doll is wearing them, and, like, that's odd, and all of a sudden, you kind of go on this journey with this protagonist who, frankly, like, I did not feel any sympathy for, mm-hmm. I didn't think anything made him special, like, I, I didn't understand, like, what it is about this guy and his story. You kind of would suspect maybe he's faking it to get girls. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, that was the thing, that's the thing I kept thinking, I was like, into, if yeah. this wasn't a true story, I would call bullshit, because, like, like the, the moral of the, the, the story is, like, oh, just get your ass beat bad enough, and every girl will, like, throw themselves at you, because, yeah. like, in every scene, they're, like, all over him, like, they all him. over him. They love mm-hmm. it. And I was thinking, this just doesn't ring true to me. Like, this just feels false on, like, every level. And it just grossed me out that Zemeckis <laughs> is so obsessed <laughs> with mocap that, like, after a certain oh, yeah. point with the violence, because, yeah, he gets away with so much because it is, like, the mocap. You know, it's what a cartoon. Rated, it's what not. What was this movie? Was it? It's PG-13. P- PG-13, but, like, yeah, there, there were people reacting to a Nazi getting cut in half. People were going, oh, yeah. you know, they were, like, reacting as if it was real because. I think he's got mocap Schindler's List remake coming up. Oh, I think that's the next logical no, step no, after no. this. But this, yeah, wasn't, this is, this defies genre this is like not i mean it's supposed to be an inspirational drama supposed to be yeah but it's not dramatic and and yeah you're laughing at stuff you're not supposed to be laughing at so it's not there's a very there's funny. a robert palmer simply irresistible music oh, video God. where they are killing nazis with machine guns so, so bad amazing. and it's I, crazy and what I, are you supposed to feel during that <laughs> and i just feel like it's so great like i don't know what the joe public and, and i felt like certain scenes genuinely if you squinted could be from like a serial killer movie yes where, where it's like the woman moves One in across photo. the street yeah change the score and, and this like is a serial buys killer a doll movie. and he like puts her hair in a ponytail and he's like there isn't that better <laughs> yeah you yeah. easily do a ser- Ooh, like serial killer trailer. From this. There was yeah, a there was a De Palma movie. You. There was a De Palma movie that it's probably still parked in the uh, in development section of IMDb, but I think it was called The Toyer or something like that about a serial killer that collected women as toys. Oof. And that's what I kept thinking I feel of. Like there is but movie 30 minutes in, I, I was tapped out. Like I lost yeah. I lost my juice, and then like an hour in, I got psyched out because I lost track of time, and I thought, mm-hmm. well, maybe this is the end of the movie because he's going in. He's going oh. into to give his speech. You got Creed 2 yeah. again. And, You're like, oh, yeah. Creed's already going to yeah. beat Drago? <laughs> yeah. I just looked at you and I'm like, Lucas, <laughs> I know. of course the judge is and, going to delay and, the and sentencing. And of course he runs out and I'm like, no, go back. He's, he's like, the we have a whole, That's after the bloodbath in the courtroom, We have a whole way. other hour to go and I don't need to see anymore. It's two solid hours. Because we saw enough. Mm-hmm. Like, we totally saw enough. So I got to go with Bishy. I got to give it a wolf. There's an extra spot of hate. I feel like there just, one, there's one just, stars in the weeds just here. because this is a concept. This, this was a concept that like should have been left alone. I think. I think I, I, I someday might visit the documentary, but yeah. like I feel give it, give it a little space from this. Yeah, I feel like it would have been better if the if 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 I, or look if I was going to make this movie as a narrative, I would make it like a horror movie, but with a twist in the sense that you you tell the story from Leslie Mann's point of view, mm-hmm. where you think she's going to get murdered, yes. but then the reveal <laughs> yes. is. Oh Very no! Nice. He's, he's really just got PTSD, and 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 he's sad, and then she like learns about it, and she helps him, and they, they become friends at the end. But like the way it is now, it is kind of taxi driverish. Like he could just eventually blow up someday, you know, because they see each other at the art gallery, but they don't say anything, and it just kind of has that weird. taxi mm-hmm. driver ending vibe. I love your punch ups, Lu- Lucas. Uh, yeah. I love them always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, when and, she sees him again <clears throat> and the, at the party at the end, and she doesn't oh, even yeah. go and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, it's, it's, it's in his bizarre. mind, right? It's in his mind, right? It's in his mind. Oh, no, no. Okay. I don't know. He's just well, done with it. Um, imagine being the real guy. Like, imagine if there was a movie <laughs> called you know, Mishki. You know he's and it was, it. <laughs> no, it was he, just there's like, no way he's like sitting it was in there. It's like at the a mo cap diarrhea disaster. Takes a picture of the screen. <sighs> Takes a picture, another picture of the screen. Like, how awful would that it. be? I mean, I would like this to be my life movie, but that's me. <laughs> what I kept thinking of about during this movie 
was Crispin Glover makes these experimental art films, yeah. largely with disabled people. <laughs> the first movie is called What Is It? The second movie is called It Is Fine, Everything Is Fine. Mm -hmm. This movie reminds me of that one because he gave the writing reins over to this severely handicapped man who could barely speak, he's wheelchair bound, and he said, "What I love your thought process so much that whatever you write, I will film verbatim. Which is interesting, wow. but he actually did it, and it turns out the guy's a big old creep. Because the movie's about a guy in a wheelchair, played by him, just obsessing over women with long hair. And he likes to run his wheelchair wheels over their necks and kill them. Oh. And the movie is oh, a brutal, punishing exploration of that. What? I kept thinking about that. I'm like, this movie's <laughs> one shade away from that. Everyone's exploiting this Just guy. tweak it slightly, mm -hmm. because it's got all the groundwork. That said, my jaw was on the floor this entire movie. Yeah. I, there was a brief point where I fell asleep. <laughs> no, but that's, no. Just, that's just because it's MacGuffin. New Year's Day, yeah. and I drank some MacGuffin's uh, no. Dan Aykroyd vodka. But it, it couldn't. It, it was like five seconds. I was out, and then I realized, Refresh back wake in. the fuck up. Any time a movie defies all <laughs> attempts to understand oh. it or contend with it. I gotta come up with a term for this where the bone count is inflated just out of sheer awe and wonderment. <laughs> because that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm not gonna give give it a woof, although I think it's a bone it's, boost. I think a bone boost. We'll figure it out. I don't think it's a woof. Uh, I was consistently entertained. I didn't know where it was going by a long shot. <sighs> I want to give it two and a half. I want, I, I'm saying I want to. Okay, okay. I'm saying I want to. My heart says two and a half, but my mouth's going to say two bones for my win. Okay, okay, okay. That's oh. two bones, for one bone for each hour of the running time. <laughs> I enjoyed it immensely, and I can't wait to own it on Blu-ray. I want them to do a 3D <laughs> conversion. Just to add another dimension to it. It's it's definitely a bone for for uh, you know that second look where you're like, what is that? Yeah, I think <laughs> what and, came by us. And here? again, Bishki, I think in your heart you know it's not a wolf either. Once like, the pain fades there's away, some laughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll reassess later. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's 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 this is gonna stay in my memory. Yeah, so, so, we're gonna have PTSD about this film yeah. about <laughs> PTSD. So creeps gonna yeah. stay in your memory. All right. Yeah. Well, this Prius is fogged the fuck we're up. Fogging it up. Yeah. Our, we we, we got to get out. We got to get out of here. But uh, go see Welcome to Marwin. Answer <laughs> take, that call. Answer the call. The Marwin call. Take all of this with a grain of salt and just, just walk into the theater. <laughs> just go there. You won't even remember why you're there. <laughs> just sit down and deal with it. Because it's, it's, a, it's a special time at the movies. And I am so proud that this is our first LodgeCast of the year. This year is going to be amazing. We're going to go on so many adventures. Oh, yeah. So thank you guys for heeding the call on More New ammo. Year's Day. More ammo! More gumbo! More ammo. No gumbo! The Nazi uh, morphs.